let's go. If not over, then through. If our companions have something to tell us. Akira. I Harper of Baldur's Gate. Shadowheart has found a little bit of herself again. Saluna cannot take all of the credit. She may have lit the way, but it is the cleric who took this step. Now we are traveling together. I realize I don't know much about you. That speaks well of your taste. I've heard my share of bad ballads about things I never did. If you have questions, ask. Just don't expect my answers to rhyme. You mentioned you know something of Illithids. More than I would like. In my youth, I was a brief and very much unwilling member of a colony's hive mind. I felt the way they think, saw the world as they do. Foul, unnatural creatures who find the foulness in us and twist it to their will. But then, who am I speaking to? You have far more experience than I. Different this time. The Elder Brain is a slave itself. Do not be moved to pity. It is a predator pinned in a trap. And if it wriggles free, mm, you'll find it still has teeth. Don't trust you, son. Ask it. Is it true that you fought the dead three before? It was Baal alone we faced in our time. And bad as that was, he had no elder brain for a lapdog then. Help won't come from the history books or from any old tales I can spin you. This is your story to write. <laughs> there. Have I fulfilled my role as your wise and wizened elder? You're not that old, are you? I've passed enough years that counting them is a waste of what remains. Which is to say, yes, I am that old. Alright. Mm. Well, do we have? A bit of heart. Did you want something? If not, I'm perfectly happy to just gaze upon you a while. I want to talk about all that happened to us. Fine. What's on your mind? Oh, am I holding up in your estimation? No, no. Yes. You've exceeded my every expectation, considering all we've been through. I think I was very lucky to find such favorable company. And attractive company too, no less. I want to talk about our relationship. Of course. What do you have? How are you? I'm not sure what to feel. My parents are alive and I need to save them. I'm lucky to have you by my side. I don't think I could face what's to come otherwise. Right. Well... Taken from the light to be raised in darkness. Your truth is finally dawning, Shadowheart. You can follow its light, or... You can retreat back into dusk. The truth is finally dawning. Shadowheart can follow its light, or she can retreat back into dusk. 
You must have been furious at your father for throwing you out of the city. No, never. He did the only thing he could. In his eyes, I invited a devil into our midst. I was a fool at best, a traitor at worst. And Grand Duke Ravenguard suffers neither. Do you miss your father? More than you know. The better question is, did he ever miss me? If he did, he missed the Will Ravenguard he once knew, not the hell-touched warlock he returned to. Hmm. Lizelle? Shadowheart was no true child of Shah, merely a captive. She must have her vengeance. Shadow Heart. She's been jerked around so much. I want to believe the gods keep this world balanced, but sometimes. sometimes I wonder. Tell me about more about your relation with Gottish. He got his claws into me early. I was a wild kid, brawling my way through the city. One of my mates got wind of a bit of work guarding some indoorsy type with lots of enemies. Seemed like easy money, so I went in for it. He took one look at me and said I was perfect. I like that. Not like that, you know. Just, it felt like a good fit. I kept him safe, and he paid me well. Well enough to move my folks into a better neighborhood and put something away for the future. My future. I respected him, trusted him. And he returned that trust, that respect. His life was in my hands, and I took that seriously. The whole thing with Zauriel happened so fast. I had no idea what had gone down until it was over. One minute I was in Baldur's Gate, a happy, healthy, not quite kid. The next, I was burning up in Avernus with an engine for a heart. Zariel love said she paid him well for my services. She'd wanted to test her new machine, and he said I'd be able to handle it. He was right. Sometimes I wish he weren't. Evil, evil bastard. Painful truths have been thrust upon Shadowheart. I believe she is strong enough to endure, but her path will be easier with our support. Okay, we can talk about something. Um, as places, things. I'm um, in the future. I was supposed to sacrifice myself to stop the absolute. Yeah, I don't think I could have gone through with it in truth. And I'm glad that I didn't, given what has come to light. What are you talking about? The Elder Brain. But more importantly, the crown that it wore. Even without seeing it for myself, I could sense it. Netherese magic. So pure, so complete. I doubted what I was feeling at first. Most Netherese artifacts contain only the faintest amount of their former power. The ghost of an echo of a memory. That crown was different. I can't fathom how such a wonder survived. Surely everything of its ilk was destroyed along with Netheril itself, but... 
No matter. It exists. I must learn more of it. Back up a little. Why is this crown so important all of a sudden? That crown sits on our gargantuan elder brain bent on destroying us and everything we hold dear. Understanding its true nature might unlock the means of our victory. We need to learn more about what we saw. An artifact as powerful as that crown must have been documented somewhere. As luck would have it, we'll soon find ourselves near one of the finest book collections this side of Candlekeep. Sorcerous Sundries. I need to go there and learn all I can. Why would a Baldurian magic shop to be the first place we look? Ha! Sorcerer's Sundries is no mere trading post. It's been serving the arcane community for centuries. Their collection of rare tomes is unparalleled. I mean, nethery sects are hardly commonplace, but I'm certain they'll have one or two stashed away. You'll have to forgive my eagerness, but if my suspicions prove to hold water, this could be the answer to all our problems. Maybe, maybe. Better? The gate is closed. As is Casador. Casador and his right of profane ascension. An imperial soiree, attended by devils and spawn alike. A grand ceremony to honor one exalted vampiric master and elevate him unfathomable station to place him in a position of such esteem the world will yearn to kneel and offer their knees sounds as if you envy him of course i envy him why wouldn't i the problem with what Casador has done is that he did it Time comes, I can stay one move ahead of him. I'll take his place before his blood can hit the floor. Would you kill to take that power from him? The others bound to the ritual? <laughs> What's a handful of the wretched servants? If they're anything like me when I was enslaved, they're all but begging for death anyway. After 200 years of shit, pure shit, I think I deserve something better. All that matter to me is that you're safe. Look, I appreciate <clears throat> that. I'm very grateful, of course. All I'm saying is, let's be clever about it. If an opportunity arises for me to become a more magnificent bastard than I already am, why turn it down? Let's find out more about the ritual before we waltz into Casador's front door. If we track down my old comrades, the other spawn, we may discover more and be finely positioned for yours truly to ascend. Well, the information will be useful. We'll find our spawn. If we don't find my brethren, they'll find us. Likely with bared fangs. We should get to them first. Then we can make their pretty tongues talk. Unless Casadors change their orders, they'll be in the dens of this town, seeking prey. Mm hmm. I see. You poor soul, let's heal you. Yeah, you look nice now. Looking forward to a bit of rest, if I'm honest. It's been a long century. Be gone, friend. I have a darling to adore. You're real. I don't intend to spend your newfound freedom. I am free from my bonds, but not my duty. The dead three are risen. 
The dead, too, remain. You must face them. I will help. They should join my camp permanently. We can fight the power of evil together. Our thoughts are as one, my friend. You must face the Chosen of Bane and Baal. I will do my part to see them laid low. Question for you, Dame Alien. Pray, ask, and I will tell. Would your mother be willing to aid us in the fight against three? I oh no. I already asked her about it. So what is the... Where is our camp? Bad. The events of the last days weigh heavily upon you. Sleep's rest is slow to come to one whose mind is so full. The Absolute is not a god, but an elder brain controlled by the Chosen of the Dead Three. They mean to use it to take control of the Sword Coast. All who carry the Tadpole are governed by the brain and by extension the Chosen. It will take but one order to transform them into an army of Mind Flayers. This would have been your fate too, were it not for the Astral Prison and the mysterious visitor inside of it. With her help, you have uncovered the cult for what it really is. A plan of conquest orchestrated by the gods of death themselves. Together, you have the power to thwart the Dead Three. If you follow this path to its end, the Elder Brain will not answer to the Chosen. It will answer to you. Mm. Will you liberate them from their parasites and their religious delusions? Or will you use the power you gain for your own purposes? I'll free everyone of this evil. I will be the hero that saves Baldur's Gate. You will not have long to wait. All you need to do now is sleep. But sleep is not for you. You want to fight me? It's your blood. Dare you fight your way to the portal? I need your help. Just a second. What was that? Wait a minute. Oh, I use divine. This is what happened. All right, all right.
do this without you. Wait a minute. Okay, we have to kill her first. Time Die. It's not over. Come to the skull. Hold them back alone. 
No, you look like rain. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. I'm just collecting brains. The skull. Come to the skull. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll come soon. So the demonic figures we saw were get Yankee all along. Hmm. The kinesis. Latest card with faded symbols Please carved over me. a drawing. Please shut up. Uh, it depicts an army training with their commander stands proudly at the center, his face marked with scars, his eyes burning with bright passion. High above, a comet strikes across the sky. Coming, coming. The Emperor? Interesting.
The honor guard. Eliminate them. My force is awakened by their assault. But with your help, we can turn this around. Destroy the guard. I will subdue their master. I'm not helping a mind flayer. I am the reason you are free. We are more alike than you want to admit. Look past it. I know you don't want to, but you must. Now, help me. How do I help? The guard. Destroy the guard. They prevent me from subduing their master. Do it now. Aid an illicit against Githyanki. We cannot. We must not. Your blind loyalty will be your undoing, Mazel. Fight with me for your own survival. No. Fool! Without me, you will perish. So now we're fighting everyone? You are healing. All right, all right.
Relit Lytic. I got you up, Richie. Savage. One down. Taking position. <laughs> My God, he's fire one. Damn it. Yeah. Let's uh, heal everyone. Take you. Not much, but what can we do? Why you hitting me, not the emperor, you fucking idiot? Okay. Stupid Githyanki. Just die.
Wait, what? No, 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 no. You're I thought I would do it. Help nearly cost us everything. You saw reason just in time. No. Don't look at me like that. I'm a mind flayer, yes. And the one who saved you again. Of all the things to be indebted to, a bloody mind flayer. You were in the in the prism all this time. Why did you deceive me? It was necessary. Rare are those that would openly consider a partnership with a mind flayer, even those who are on a path of becoming one. It's like I said before. I'm just like you, an adventurer. I came from Baldur's Gate, though I was never one to be constrained by circumstance. I longed for more. That longing brought me to Moonrise Towers on a search for treasure. To a colony of mind slayers who caught me, changed me into what I am now. For years, I served the Elder Brain, the one you know as the Absolute. I was a thrall like any other, but I was fortunate. I broke free and started a new life in my old city. I sustained myself on criminals. Unglamorous, but there are plenty of them. Rarely missed. And they fueled me when I did my work. I had the good fortune to meet Duke Stillman. We formed a partnership, and through her, I became the governing force behind the Knights of the Shield. The largest mercantile operation in Baldur's Gate. People referred to me as the Emperor. Such was my influence. Though of course they had no idea what I really was. My needs were sated. I was happy for a while. Until my true nature was discovered by the tyrant himself. Lord Gortash. He tore me from my home and brought me back to the brain where I became a slave once again. A slave he continued to call the Emperor. The name was intended as a slight to remind me of the heights from which I fell. But I have grown fond of it. It encapsulates well who I've become. Lord Gortas was one of the chosen in the colony. Indeed. His hubris knows no bounds. To enslave me, that was his nature. But to enslave an elder brain, a questionable decision. I shall look forward to sharing his downfall with you. That Githyank in the sphere, who is it? Prince Orpheus. Son of the first leader of the Githyanki. Mm. His power has been the source of your continued protection against the voice of the Absolute. The power to disrupt hive mind communication. It is the same power that enabled Orpheus's mother to bring about the fall of the Elithid Empire eons ago. A power she passed on to him, and that I leveraged for you. When Orpheus's mother left, a usurper took her place. Vlakith declared herself queen of the Githyanki. Vlakith wanted his power, but Orpheus rose against her, and so she sealed him and his honor guard within this prison. Bound by infernal chains, Orpheus could never leave. Bound by duty, his guard never would. They were close to breaking my hold on that prince, and if they had succeeded, we would be lost. I am relieved. You have embraced your potential enough that you could help me eliminate them. Alone, Orpheus will be much easier to control. Mm, I don't know.
Or that you or Orpheus that like it wanted us to kill and showed us inside the prison? Most certainly Orpheus. He is a threat to her reign. Some Githyanki still revere him in defiance of their teachings. Blackith was safe as long as they believed him to be dead. But as you can see, he is very much alive. She kept him this way because she was reluctant to eradicate such power. Power that she might one day wish to take from him. If the Githyanki ever find out what she has done, there will be civil war. Blackith will be finished. How did Gortash... Uh, were you present here too? No. Gortash sent me on a mission to retrieve the Astral Prism. I was one of many, but the first to find it. How Gortash or the other Chosen learned of its existence, I do not know. The moment I found it, I felt a change. My free will returning. I followed the feeling inside. And found... Orpheus. I realized what the prism was for. Containment. While my body was within the prism's bounds, my mind was free. I could resist the Elder Brain, the Chosen. Better yet, I could plan to overthrow them. All I needed to do was subdue Orpheus and find allies in the outer world. You. What happens if we free Orpheus? That would be a terrible idea. The moment he is free, he will attack you. Your only defense would be to kill him. And in so doing, you would doom us both. Even though he is subdued, you feel Orpheus's revulsion. A pulsing hatred that cannot be contained. The Emperor is telling the truth. To him, you are just another wretched illithid. You carry a tadpole. As far as Orpheus is concerned, you are already a lithid, a sworn enemy, just like me. <laughs> I want to free him, actually. I'm no illithid and never will be. You are already more illithid than you realize. It has improved you. No. You seek to reverse an inevitable process. A process of evolution. When I first escaped from the Elder Brain, I too railed against the change. But the longer I have inhabited this form, the more it has grown on me. Even if my original body remained intact after I transformed, I would not return to it. Doing so would only impose limitations. As an Alithid, I have far surpassed who I ever was before. You too should embrace this change. Never. I don't like what you are implying. Like it or not, our chances of defeating the Elder Brain are substantially improved if you embrace your latent illithid potential. I've been studying you for a while now. I believe I can trigger the next stage of your tadpole's life cycle, while continuing to preserve your independence. You have seen what I can do. Imagine yourself with the same strength, the same intelligence, the same devastating beauty. If you let me, I can evolve you. <clears throat> If you can evolve me, why can't you stop Ceramorphosis altogether? The answer is twofold. One, I can, but it would kill you, as I told you before. Two, why would I? You have done well with the limited form you have, but you would do far better as an illithid. So, do you wish to evolve or not? No way. I understand. Let us hope, then, that your present self will be sufficient to deal with three gods of death and a giant magically enhanced Elder Brain. But in case you change your mind...
look after it. Use it when you're ready to evolve. You or your allies. It has vitality enough for you all. But we mustn't lose focus. We need to resume our journey. You heard the Chosen. The Brain has gone to the city, and the army marches to follow. We must not let them reach it. We must find the Brain, and bring it under our control. Um, I want to do this free. Wait a minute. Ah. 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 Welcome, rest. I want to kill him. Do you want to kill him as well, guys? begin to splinter. You are found. Now you hear me. Now you yield! Uh. Oh. oh, I guess this is the end. Oh, so ugly. Join me. Throw. Game over. You have succumbed to her. Now part of the grand design. Oh. Um. I really want to try. Kill him before. Attacking me, fool. Ha. 
Can me use get the Yankee? Oh my God, that's a critical strike for you. Telling the truth. If it dies, so do you. What? <laughs> what is my hands? <laughs> um, that's kind of strange. <laughs> really. See, yeah, there is no, no reason. Can save Orpheus. This now. Uh, 
The rock resists all attempts to shatter it. The orb hums with cerebral magic, permeable, but impenetrable. Within it, the Githyanki prince is as silent as a corpse, but for the murmur of his powers being siphoned away. somewhere to camp soon. Use artifact. Control the elder brain. He offers was a Githian Knight plan to meet someone and Sheres Keres who knows how to free Orpheus. We should look for Anthem there. I'm using the astral touch that all the Emperor has given us the means to unlock the next stage of our Elfid transformation without becoming mind players. If we commune with the astral touch that all we will evolve. Heard about it? Talk to Zell about Orpheus. We discovered that the ancient Githyanki prince called Orpheus was being held prisoner inside the artifact. We talked to Zell about him. Blackith would destroy and Voss would set free. It is Orpheus, the blood of the mother, the prince of the comet. The blood of the mother? Who is he exactly? Listen close. The Emperor spoke only in half truths. For you to know the tale of Orpheus, you must know the tale of Gith and of Blackith. Long ago, when we rose up against our gay slavers, Mother Gith made for the Hells to secure an alliance with the Archdevil Tiamat. Tiamat gifted the Githyanki our red dragons. Gith remained in the Hells, and Tiamat's envoy proclaimed Vlakith our ruler. The first Vlakith of many. It is Vlakith 157 whom my people now call Queen. 157? One hundred fifty-seven? That's a lot of lackets. Yes. Our current queen has claimed undeath and reigned for a thousand years. But it was the first whom Orpheus tried to slay. Orpheus was, is, Gith's only son. He led his mother's own honor guard in a coup against Vlakith I. It was Kithrak Voss himself who slayed the prince in vicious battle. Or so the Varshas teach us. Yet the Prince of the Comet's been with us, subdued by that repugnant illithid. Should Orpheus go free, he would tear Vlakith's empire to pieces and build new glory from the scraps. Then what was right? Orpheus is a seed of Vlakith demise. The seed and the sower. Every word Voss spoke, he spoke true. Orpheus is the living proof of the Queen's lies, and the living weapon that conquered our Gaeth slavers. One word from his lips, and the people would doubt. Two words, and they would rage. Three words, and they would bow to the true heir. If the Githyanki are to be free, the Prince of the Comet must lead the way. I'd like to talk about Orpheus. What about him? Why is he called Prince of the Comet? The historical slates describe Orpheus as a fearsome, terrible creature, powerful beyond measure, and enthralled by the Geich. 
So mad with power, he'd smash through the Githyanki Empire and deliver the shards to his illithid masters. And glowing with such psionic force that he and his red dragon blazed a trail through the skies. A lethal comet careening towards my people. Lies, of course. Vlakid spread a false image of Orpheus as monstrous betrayer, and her knights as the butchers who sliced him through. She was right to fear him, I'll grant her that. So great is the comet, it could shatter her reign. Why did Vlakid keep Orpheus alive all those millennia ago? The Emperor may be loathsome, but it's right. Orpheus can disrupt a gay hive mind. A talent like that makes the prince a powerful shield and a powerful weapon. Why destroy a weapon like that when you can contain it in a relic and keep it for yourself? Why would like it want Orpheus dead now? He's so valuable alive. A weapon is only an asset for as long as it isn't pointed at you. The means of Vlakith's own end has been ripped away from her. Better to have Orpheus killed than to risk his escape. Better to risk the rise of Illithids than let the Prince of the Comet deny her the godhood she craves. Who were the hostile Githyanki in the prison? Orpheus is honor guard, loyal to the end. Trapped by Vlakith in the same prism holding their noble prince, fruitlessly hacking at the sphere that contains him. They see us as geich, tadpoled husks in the Empress thrall. I regret their deaths, but I pledge to live as they perished, in the service of Gith's son. Very well. The Emperor's Astral Touch Deadpool promises exceptional power. It also promises to break us beyond repair. This ossified parasite does not make us more, but less. There will be ice where once there was fire. And there will be a void where our souls once resided. It's fine. I know. And I won't. I agree. I cannot agree more. Flare inside the artifact or astral prism the whole time we've had it. Sounds like utter madness, even though I've seen it with my own eyes. The more I learn, the less I understand just why I was sent to retrieve that thing. But it matters little now. I do not serve Shah anymore, nor the Mother Superior. The prism is no longer my mission. Saving my parents is. But I digress. Did you want something? I don't know. Uh. Rest, I guess. No heart, your hair. Be honest. What do you think of the new look? I love it. Well, I'm glad someone does. Perhaps I'll get used to it. I have a lot to get used to right now.
Arlok? Gods. A mind flayer has been getting their tentacles all over our dreams this whole time. I'm really not sure about putting any trust at all in this thing. It's already shown itself a liar. I've got my eyes on the Emperor, and Karlak doesn't blink. Good. I was concerned when I saw Shadowheart creeping about with a blade in the dead of night, but it was just to cut her hair, it seems. It suits her. <laughs> 